We might have just had the game of the year in college football. And we'll talk about all the craziness because it was a wild, wild week. On top of that, I'm going to give you a taste. The taste. That's right. A taste of my early Heisman contenders, my Heisman front runners. It's football, bro. We're back. You can check out the podcast on all podcasts and platforms if you want to check it out in its audio form ad free but of course you can check us out on the youtube let's go ahead get into this sucker and we're gonna start with well i i guess you could say the craziest game of the week ha ha it was one of the craziest games of the week let's start with the friday game virginia tech almost beat miami and as a hurricanes fan it wasn't a feel it wasn't feel good this was this was an interesting Cam Ward game. You had a lot of the spectacular stuff that Cam Ward could do. As uh, he could have had his Heisman moment with that little flick for a touchdown. I think that put the Hurricanes on top. But it wasn't his cleanest game. I mean, the, the way this game opened up was just something else. Because he cam ward he he ends up fumbling on the opening drive right i think it was like three plays in and it's around miami's uh 30 35 ends up fumbling the ball uh just trying to keep the play alive for too long at the end of the day man just take the sack live to live another down and virginia tech answers right back drones bam touchdown they're in the lead but miami they too answer right back with a big play of their own tie up the game and then the hurricanes they end up getting an interception so you feel like okay this is now where things fall off the rails for the Hokies the the, the hurricanes are going to run uh with this game now nah, my friend didn't go that way because freaking cam ward <laughs> freaking cam ward gets into the red zone and throws a pick this would have put the, the Hurricanes up 14. And instead, uh, you ended up getting a really big run from Tutton. I think it was like a 50, 55 yarder. Tied up ball game. Virginia Tech, they, they, they start to pull away. At some point, it's a 10 point game. Miami is down 24 14. And we go into half down seven. And it's like, okay, well, Miami minus 16 and a half is officially dead. <laughs> Uh, killed a lot of my early parlays and uh, the, the the Virginia Tech would come out right out the gate they they'd go up 27 17 go back up 10 Miami was able to fight back into that ball game again you saw some of the specialness from Cam Ward again not saying Cam Ward was terrible this game but like two of his like yeah pretty two massive mistakes in this game one being the sack sack fumble strip sack and then the interception in the red zone costing us points but it was really the second half where he came alive and like he ended up being wonderful uh he did have another pick in this game that was in the, it was in the second half it, it was like a batted ball came off his receiver's hands not really his fault but he came alive and really the thing that everyone walked away talking about this game was that last play the 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 touchdown that never was well they ruled it a touchdown on the field virginia tech essentially they, they hit like a 30 yard 35 yard pass as time expires and it's ruled a touchdown on the field i'm like no freaking way hurricanes just lost this game and you're we're looking at the replays and it's like okay well there doesn't seem to be enough to overturn this. And at that point, it's like, uh, they probably should go with the roller on the field. And honestly, the roller on the field could have been, could have been, could have been a touchdown, could, could have been an incompletion. I would have been fine either way. I just don't didn't think there was enough evidence there to reverse whatever call was made on the field. Well, apparently they didn't think so. Apparently they thought that when the ball bobbled free, a Miami Hurricane defender who was already out of bounds got his hand on it, meaning dead ball. I don't know. I don't know how they make that call. Miami really survives 
in this one this is the virginia tech team that i thought we were going to see all year this is this virginia tech team feels a lot better than two and three but it is what it is miami they, they still one. they remain undefeated they will be better as the year goes on hopefully this is a bit of a wake-up call for the hurricanes because golly that that was some scary stuff now let's let's go and talk about the game of the week which was alabama versus georgia alabama ends up winning 41 to 34 we did a watch along on this game and golly g willikers uh straight up guys i i didn't i didn't expect after alabama came storm in the gates uh i didn't expect it to get this close in the second half but alabama was doing everything right jalen milrow he was having his heisman moment he was having a hell of a game ended up having a hell of a game and alabama was rolling i mean i, th I think uh I, I know they end up leading at a half uh 30 to 7 but uh, i feel like at, at one point in this game that uh, Alabama was up just like freaking like 30 nothing like it, it just it, it felt like that type of game maybe like 27 nothing like it, it just felt like Alabama was dog walking Georgia Carson Beck looked terrible in this game it wasn't all his fault it really wasn't like I have a lot of problems and I said this during the stream with how Georgia came out, like their the, the the play calling on the first couple of drives, like we've seen Alabama's defense be a little squishy against the run, and then they don't run a they they, they don't do a run play until drive three. Excuse me, like okay, why not attack what where Alabama seems that they were susceptible at. Because they may have blown out Wisconsin the week prior, but Wisconsin was doing a good job running the football in that game. They just unfortunately were also doing a good job of fumbling the football. Also, Tyler Van Dyke uh, ends up uh, hurting hurting his knee, maybe tearing his ACL. I can't remember which, but uh, like right on the first series. But I don't. I didn't get it from Georgia. They came out throwing the football. Carson Beck had some not great throws in this game. Uh, not to say every interception was his fault. Like there was the, there was the the interception where he essentially just threw it to Oscar Delp. Oscar Delp's out there laying out a screen, and I guess Carson Beck changed the play at the line. It was loud in Tuscaloosa. Who would have thought? Delp didn't get the call, so he thought he was still out there blocking for a screen rather than going to the flat and making a play and. It ends up being an interception. Like, again, Carson Beck, not playing well. Play calling, not so great in the first half. The defense didn't play a good, great, great football game. You had Mike, uh, Mikel Williams back in this game. Uh, I think he only played a portion. I think he maybe played 30 or 40 snaps because uh, he's coming off the high ankle sprain. Wasn't at 100%. You're not going to be for the next few weeks. That's just, that's just how those high ankle sprains work. But, like, Regardless, like Alabama, this looked like a foregone conclusion going into halftime. And then Alabama, I don't want to say they took their foot off the pedal, but they kept a lot and a lot of time for Georgia to be able to get back into this ball game. It really did. If you want to go take a look at the second half drives for Alabama, because uh, it, it starts like their first drive in the in the third quarter was a was three plays six yards and a punt. They end up getting a field goal on the second drive. This is after Georgia answers back answers back with a touchdown uh, and a two point conversion to make it thirty to fifteen. But you get a field goal on the next drive. Okay, that's all well and good. Is what it is. But then. They literally punt the ball on the next three drives. Their drives, six plays, 13 yards. You have uh, three plays, five yards. You got five plays, 23 yards. They weren't moving the ball, but they also weren't ticking time on the clock, which allotted a n r too much time for Georgia to kind of find their swag. They, they really 
turned up the tempo in the second half offensively. They said Carson Beck just starts slinging. And he started slinging. He took some shots. He took some shots like on that uh on that other touchdown uh the, that actually was it it wasn't to was it to tie uh to take the lead? That was the big play. Uh yes, it was to take the lead. You had the the Dylan Bell touchdown where it ended up being just a broken coverage. Keon Sab uh ends up biting on the 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 inside fake and then Dylan Bell just shoots up field wide open easy throw for uh for Carson Beck to make and suddenly and that that actually I don't even think that was to take uh the lead that was to take the lead they take the lead 34 to 33 with 2 minutes left in this ball game nuts wild Georgia, they're up 34. Didn't have a single lead in this ball game. And it lasted for about the time it takes me to go grab some chips and come back. Because Jalen Milrow, first play, hits Ryan Williams on a 75-yard touchdown. A beautiful one. First off, a, a nice contested catch into the little, little, little spin move. He put put two def Georgia defenders through the cycle. And then he hit the accelerator and he was gone. And just like that, Bama, they're up. They hit the two-point conversion. They're up 41-34. Georgia, now they need to go answer back. And you're probably thinking, do they go, even if they get the tutty, do they go for the two-point conversion? You're in Tuscaloosa. Alabama, they're pissed. This is the first time that they were underdogs in Tuscaloosa since 2007. And they, I mean, shoot. Carson Beck manages to drive this team down the field. And, I mean, the th the initial throw, I think the big throw was to uh, Kobe Young. That really got him down there. Uh, it, it, it was one of them, but... Uh, it, it was a very contested ball, and it involved, well, Kobe Young having to come back to the quarterback. Actually, I think that's the one that was dropped. Dropped, ball placement could have been better, but it was a long throw. So, honestly, pretty good ball placement, all things considered. Uh, but it was just well defended. It was a tough contest to catch for Kobe Young to have to make. But they try to go to the well one more time, going, to, going Kobe Young's way. And, he, and Carson Beck just undershoots it. Like, if you're going to throw that ball, you got to throw it past the sideline. Or past, yeah, past the sideline. Put it where only your man can get it. Ends up intercepted. Game is over. No timeouts remaining. Alabama deserved to win this game. But, golly, Georgia made it hella fun. Georgia scored 19 points in that fourth quarter. Coming up short. Golly. Good game. You got to give Georgia some credit. Georgia, Carson Beck, Kirby Smart. For battling back against your the your biggest rival at their place. Like, honestly. Like, if you want to talk. Like, everyone's going to talk about the gaffes of Carson Beck. But to be able to stay in that ball game. That was huge. I think that was huge. Now, I'm again, for all the praise we can give Carson Beck, Jalen Milrow deserves all the flowers. He was unstoppable in this game. Utterly unstoppable. So, big win for Bama. Everybody loves the NFL draft, and I know you want to be familiar with every potential prospect that your team may draft. So I got good news for you. My draft guide is available for purchase. It is good throughout the entire draft cycle, and it updates through the season regularly. You'll get my current evals and rankings on hundreds of different players with player backgrounds and analytics. It also contains combine and pro day numbers, as well as my notes from the senior and shrine bowl. You can purchase it for a one-time payment of 30 bucks on PayPal Venmo. And now I have the cash app. Follow the link in the description and be sure to include your email because it is a Google spreadsheet. That is how I share it with you. So please don't make me hunt down your email. Just don't do it.
Anywho, it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel. Let's move on to Kentucky versus Ole Miss. This was the shocker of the day as Kentucky beats Ole Miss 20 to 17. Ole Miss chance to tie the game. It's wide left. Kicking it from the furthest right hash and you go wide left. It is what it is, but Ole Miss didn't deserve to win this game. It looked like it was going to be business as usual as they opened up. Good score and drive. They're up 7-0. But Kentucky, they they basically paid to, played to their pace. And we saw this in the Georgia game. We're, uh, Kentucky's a team that's like, hey, we want to we wanna slow this game to a snail's pace. We want to control the time of possession. We want to control the ball. We're going to play good defense. And we're going to take advantage of scores. Like We're, we're going to try to score points. We're going to have long, methodical drives. And we're going to score points. And they essentially did that. And the big problem with Ole Miss was th they had nothing that, that was sustainable. They were getting moderate production out of the run game. They like to run that play action, but it wasn't enough pro like enough production in that run game, which to be fair, like, dude, Henry Parrish? Poor Glad was beat up all game, man. It felt like every other drive, he was coming up limping and needed to come off the field for a little bit. So they couldn't get uh, a consistent run game going. And you have, you're just constantly taking these like long shots in the first half downfield, like the average depth of target for Jackson Dart was 16 yards downfield. That's insane. That's not sustainable. And that was the thing. They couldn't sustain drives. And so now you're causing very like, you're not, you're not possessing the ball. And you're just playing to Kentucky's pace. You're letting them be, be, being able to control the pace of this game. And Ole Miss was able to, to take the lead late in this ball game. They eventually, they're up 17-13. Uh, and you just have a freaking insane, insane fourth and seven, I believe. And they... They take a shot to uh, Zabarian Brown, the wide receiver there for Kentucky, one of the wide receivers. It's kind of like also their big return guy. They hit him downfield. Like, let's talk about how pants Ole Miss's secondary was in this game. It wasn't a great showing for the Ole Miss secondary. I thought the Ole Miss D-line did a good job, and Kentucky's offensive line was definitely much better than it has been in weeks past. But the Kentucky, like Ole Miss was getting after it. It was just Kentucky, Vandergriff, they were doing a good job of getting the ball out quickly and controlling the line of scrimmage when it came to the run game. They were playing their, their pace of football. But a fourth and seven, Brown, big touchdown. And it, it makes you think back to like, oh, Stoops, why didn't you go for that fourth down late in the Georgia game? Why are you punting that football? If you believe in your defense, go for it. And he must have had deja vu. He made it out of flashback. It was like, this is a butterfly effect. I'm not going to make that decision in this game. We're, go we're going out there for blood. And they ended up getting it, man. Ole Miss. Season's not over for Ole Miss, obviously. Uh, I think you could be a 10-2 and two team and make the college football playoff. I mean, shoot. 12 teams, so they still got a really good shot at it, but this was definitely a hiccup uh, uh, on the way there. In a couple of weeks, they will take on LSU. I'm sure LSU saw this game and were like, all right, man, we just got to play really good defense. Don't allow them to hit them deep shots and control the pace. be really nice if we had a good defense. Oh, LSU, the defense looked all right against South Alabama this week. It is what it is. Uh, the only other game I really want to go into is the game, uh, the other game I did a watch long for, Louisville versus Notre Dame, just because of how wacky it was. Like, it was a wacky game. It was a wacky game that you, if you're Louisville, you're walking away, it's like, man, 
Notre Dame didn't beat us. We beat ourselves. Like, don't get me wrong. Notre Dame totally deserved to win this game. They made less gaffes, especially when it came to the second half. But Louisville just couldn't stop from shooting themselves in the foot consistently. So the opening kickoff ends up fumbled. Louisville gets the ball. They score touchdown. Just like that, Louisville up 7 nothing. And then they would proceed not to do much. Well, they did do much in the second half. Just not a lot for their benefit. Uh, as Notre Dame, man, they would just... They would just take advantage of Louisville's gaffes. Uh, I think the next play you had the uh, Tyler Shuck. He ends up scrambling for like 45, 50 yards, but then he gets stripped from behind. Literally, they pull his pants down. Well, It wasn't a pretty sight, but he fumbles, turnover. Notre Dame, they go down and score. Now they're up 14-7. to And then... You have a turnover on downs. Not pretty for... Like, I mean, let's just go through the gaffes in this first half. You have a turnover on downs after the fumble uh, for Louisville. Seven plays, and then you punt it. You did have the touchdown. The interception followed the touchdown, which sucked. I mean, and because it was a... It was a bobbled ball out of Ja'Cory Brooks' hands. Just right into Xavier Watts' hands. Like, it it, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. And then you end the quarter, or you end the, the half, with another turnover on downs. Like, dude, during my watch alongs, I got the turnover kazoo. This sucker was getting, was putting in work. You want an MVP of this game? It was the turnover kazoo. Give it... Give the turnover kazoo its flowers. So you got Notre Dame. They're up 24 to 14 at halftime. And, oh, man, I wish I could say Louisville came out swinging. But you had a punt, turnover on downs, punt. And then eventually they get a field goal to make a one-score game. You're like, oh, thank God. Louisville, they're back in this. It's a, it's a one-score ball game. And this is where you have, like, the screenplay to Jeremiah Love goes for a six. Just like that, it's 31-17. Louisville needs two tutties to tie this game up. They they do respond with a touchdown. Like, honestly, Tyler Shuck, considering how much time or lack thereof time that he had to throw the football, Tyler Shuck kind of was the MVP here for Louisville. On top of the defense. Defense played really good for uh, Louisville. But Tyler Shuck didn't have a lot of time to make decisions. Wasn't putting the ball really in harm's way. And was taking necessary shots here and there. But he did a good job of being able to help sustain drives. Even though some of them did result in turnover on downs. But what we really need to highlight here is how stupid... The play call it was on Louisville's final drive to go tie the freaking ball game. They get the ball back with, I think, 244, 243 left in the fourth quarter. They need a touchdown. So what do you do? I don't know. On back-to-back -back plays, you run the football and you drain all 44 seconds of the clock? What the hell are we even doing here? And it's not, it's not like, like they were blessed with good field position, but... They still had to go 53 yards. Like, let's, let's not, let, let's not, like, twist things here. Was it 53, maybe 51 yards? They had to, they had to go a considerable distance to get a touchdown. It's not like you, you just got to get in field goal position. They needed a touchdown. And you run on back to back plays. You go to the two minute warning. You come out of that, and ho, 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 you guess it again. Third and two, they run the football. But you don't get it. Now it's like fourth and one. You go for the QB steak. Oh, not so fast, my friend. False start or delay a game. I can't remember which it was. I think it was a delay a game, actually. Uh, and now you're pushed to a fourth and six, fourth and seven scenario. What are we doing? What are we doing? 
utterly ridiculous. It was terrible. And uh, they get stopped. Fun fact. Uh, so Notre Dame, this is great. Notre Dame really doesn't have a crazy hard schedule. Uh, they do end the season at the Coliseum against USC. But you got a question, to, can Notre Dame make the college football playoff with two losses when you consider one of those losses is a loss at home to Northern Illinois? I don't know. We'll see. But definitely the hardest team on their schedules left is USC. And you could, I think you could make an argument they could lose that game and maybe make the college football playoff. But this is a big win for Notre Dame. Louisville, listen, it's it's not a conference game. They're undefeated as it stands uh, in the in the uh, ACC. Have they actually started ACC play? Who did they play last week? Oh, that's right, Georgia Tech. So they are one and zero in ACC play. So listen, the the road for Louisville it, it's still there, but there's a lot that they need to uh, take into account going into uh, coming out of this week because. This, this was just a game of, hey, we're Louisville. How can we beat ourselves? Oh, I don't know. Let's figure out a way, though. Underdog of Fantasy. Go to Underdog Fantasy and use promo code BROSHMO when you sign up, and they will match your first deposit up to $250. It's the best place to play weekly best ball or my favorite, higher or lower on player props. For instance, they got the doubleheader. They got, we got Monday Night Football, but we got it twice. And you could take advantage of some of their gimme picks here. Like you got Tyree Kill, higher or lower one yard. You got Jared Goff, higher or lower one yard. So get in on the action. They got promos for you and specials every day of the week. It's a it's a real fun place to bet some football. But it's not just football. They got all kinds of other sports. I just don't care about other sports. Hey, that's just who I am. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny myself but yeah get in on the action sign up using promo code bro schmo and they will match that first deposit up to 250 dollars but as always bet responsibly let's get to the college football top 25 let's start with my fallers this week is yes unfortunately central florida they couldn't get it done at home against colorado uh colorado was way too much so it was so funny uh, Central Florida entered the game. I believe they were 13 and a half point favorites. And they end up uh well losing by by 27. They lose 48 to 21. Uh Colorado did a good job of slowing down the run game. You uh, Central Florida really couldn't do much of else. Uh Oklahoma State, they're my other faller. They deserve it. That offense looks like trash. Uh, the defense say hey, you can only do so much when you know your offense is trash. You're going to be on the field a ton. Oklahoma State, I never really bought into them coming into the year. I think they were like 24th in my top 25. I don't see a path that they can make the uh, college football playoff or the Big 12 conference game. So bad, bad loss there. They, they get railroaded by Kansas State, 42-20. to 20. My teams had just missed the cut Boise State you got a Heisman front runner spoiler alert well, you got a Heisman front runner in Ashton Genty you blow out an undefeated Washington State team uh they, they blow them out 45 to 24 it was 45 17 Washington State scored a touchdown late in the game kind of is what it is but good on Boise State they take on Utah State uh this upcoming week they are three and one with their loss being to Oregon. So it's a good loss to have. Isn't that right, Akila and Gojo? They're, bi they're big Ash and Genty fans. I don't blame them, man. I don't blame them. I also have Duke here. They're 5-0. and uh, they, they had a really good comeback win against UNC. UNC was up 20 to nothing in that game. Duke scores the next 21 points. They get a big win, but they will be challenged next week against a very good Georgia Tech team. Can Dukes remain undefeated? You, we definitely have to at least talk about Duke being undefeated, even if you don't believe in them. And then I got Colorado, man. Colorado, they're four and one. They, they, they I, I get it. The Baylor 
win. It's not beautiful. You had to win on the Hail Mary. Or you had to go to overtime on the Hail Mary. But the defense is playing re- re- pretty well. Well enough for Colorado. Shadur's playing really good football. Travis Hunter, he's hitting the Heisman pose. He doesn't appreciate Richard Sherman. He's like, I'm not bland. I got a little little season, a little spice to me. But good win for Colorado. Uh, don't don't sleep on them. Uh, they, they, their one loss is against a Nebraska team. Granted, that Nebraska team is currently 4-1. Four, uh, four and one. So it's not a bad loss as it stands right now. Uh, Pittsburgh, they had the bye this week. They take on North Carolina next week. North Carolina, they're just reeling. Should be a winnable game for Pittsburgh. They're currently 4-0. Iowa State, not the prettiest win. They beat Lippin Houston 20 to nothing. And this was a team like Iowa State. They took the they took the, the foot off the gas. Well, first off, I think they were only up 3-0 going into halftime. It was something like that. And then they, they just totally they got up to 20 nothing and they just took the foot off the gas. They were like, let's just get out of this week. We take on Baylor next week. That's where our focus is going to be. But currently, Iowa State, they are also undefeated. Let's go ahead, get to the college football top 25 with UNLV. Finally, they're here. They're in my top 25. No starting quarterback. He's gone. We didn't pay him. It is what it is. I don't know. I don't know. Shea stuff happened. I'm not going to get into it. No problem. I'm a, I'm gonna butcher this cat's name. Who who is currently UNLV's quarterback? It's like like Haj Malik or Maj uh Maj Malik. No, I think it's Haj Malik Williams. A former Campbell quarterback ends up having a huge game against what what a lot of people thought was a re- reasonably good Fresno State team. This was a Fresno State team that that played Michigan really well to start the year. I know you're Michigan fans, guys. Get over it. Michigan's mid. Michigan's not mid. Michigan, well, Michigan's kind of mid. They're upper, upper echelon mid. But you want, yeah, Fresno State. They, they took Michigan essentially almost the distance. Uh, granted, Michigan pulled away late in that ball game, but this is supposed to be a good Fresno State team, and UNLV was like. We are going to clap this Fresno State team. And they did. And they freaking did as they beat them 59 to 14. Um, I'm currently pulling up the, again, because not familiar with the quarterback. I know he's from Campbell. Uh, it's Hodge Malik Williams. Okay. Huge game. He had like five total touchdowns or something like that. It was It was nuts. But they take on Syracuse this upcoming week. If they could get by Syracuse, then this could be your group of five team that makes it. They would have to get by Boise um, and win the Mountain West. We'll see. Indiana's here at 24. Welcome. Welcome to the top 25. They have they, they had a pretty solid win against a good Maryland team. They beat them 42 to 28 they take on northwestern very winnable game next week they should go to six and oh and dude indiana and signetti man they're they are playing so well for him I, i'm a believer and if you're unfamiliar with signetti he was the head coach over at james madison last year back when they had that magical season so indiana doing some good things I guess SMU is back, by the way. They're here at 23. Very slow start to the year. Now Kevin J or Kevin Jennings is your starter at quarterback. Sorry, Preston Stone. Don't know what happened there. Is what it is. But the offense is running really well. Uh, they smashed Florida State 42-16. to Big game next week, though. They take on Louisville. Rutgers here at 22. Uh, they they end up beating Washington 21 to 18. He had Washington miss a variety of different field goals, but uh, Rutgers get they get to face a tough Nebraska team next week. So uh, I'm ready, man. I'm here for it, dude. I'm a big big fan of this Rutgers team. A lot of that has to do with uh, what they did to my Hurricanes in the bowl game last year. Bitter. Uh, Arizona, they're here at 21. 
listen, it's a huge win against Utah. They beat Utah 23-10 at Utah. Also, if you didn't know, now you know. Cam Rising still not playing. So it's hard to invest in the uh, the Utah offense. But this is a good win. I'm not going to take the wind out of the sails of Arizona. But the Big 12 is just up for grabs at this point. And Arizona is in the run in there. Uh, Arizona played pretty, pretty darn good football. They moved the ball really well. No Fafita slinging it and you're loving it. So Arizona, it was kind of weird like because I had them in my polls. Uh, I've had them in my polls, I think, this whole season. But it's hard to move them up with the with the big 12 just being so wide open as you're gonna see as let's, let's just move on as you're gonna see a, a a couple of other big 12 teams here in the, the next group of uh of teams here but at 20 i got usc big win uh against wisconsin didn't look like it was gonna be that way they were down 21 to 10 and then they just rip off 28 unanswered points they win 38 to 21 Miller Moss looked great. Love to see it. Uh, Kansas State, they beat the brakes off of Oklahoma State. Avery Johnson played his type of game where it's like, hey, Kansas State, we're a team that really, really, really is good at running the football. And they were really good at running the football. But again, they are contenders there in the Big 12. Uh, we got I got Louisville here. I, I kind of talked to death about how they just shot themselves in the foot. You got a big game coming up this week against SMU. Could be a good, big bounce back game as, again, you got Miami, but who's who's probably, probably in all likelihood, they're the favorite to make the ACC championship game. Louisville, they're in the run in there along with uh, teams like Clemson. And then, I mean, you could put away SMU and that would be huge. I mean, because that kind of knocks SMU uh, not necessarily out of contention, but it's a big hit. Uh, BYU, they smashed Baylor, kind of. Baylor kind of inched their way back into this game, but they were able to hold on, get the job done. They end up winning 34-28. They do get a bye. They are undefeated at 5-0. I don't know how much I believe in this BYU team, though. We'll, we'll see as... Conference play continues, but they're 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 playing hella fun football. LSU, they had uh South Alabama this week. They smashed them 42 to 10. Didn't hit the over. Uh, I was thinking that maybe, maybe these teams go over 60 and a half. They end up going uh scoring 52 total points. So it is what it is. Uh but LSU smacked them. They're gonna get a bye next week, and then they take on Ole Miss. So Gonna be a big, big showdown there. F15, I got Notre Dame. Big win in South Bend. You beat Louisville. You needed it. You loved it. Uh, again, this team doesn't have particularly the hardest schedule compared to everyone, everyone else in this top 25 because they're an independent. So really, you just got to get the job done with your toughest test probably being USC. Clemson, they smack Stanford uh, 40 to 14. They take on Florida State next weekend. Uh, this is not a good Florida State team. This is not the Florida State team we thought we were going to be getting into the season. So, should be a win. Clemson rebounded well after that opening season loss to Georgia. Michigan, they're here at 13. They beat Minnesota 27 to 24. They were largely in control of this game the whole way through until the end. Minnesota came rallying back. Uh, and then you had the onside or the offside onside kick, which Minnesota recovered, but then there was the penalty that oh, there was an offside. Bam, game over. So, like this is Michigan's gonna be winning games like this. We know it. Like they're not going to put up a lot of points. They're going to try, try to control the time of possession. They're going to run the football down your throats. The defense just needs to do enough. Keep in mind, Michigan was missing uh, Will Anders, or Will Johnson. They were missing uh, Josiah Stewart this game. So they were missing two of their biggest 
uh, defensive players in that game. Uh, Liberty, their game got canceled against Appalachian State. I don't know if they're going to reschedule that, uh, but I do think Liberty, prob like they have one of, if not the easiest schedule in college football, and Appalachian State was supposed to be one of their toughest tests. Game gets canceled. Again, I imagine they reschedule it. Maybe they don't, but they're currently undefeated. I think you can make an argument, though. UNLV, if they go undefeated, win them out of West, that's probably going to get them in the college football playoff rather than a, uh, a undefeated Conference USA Liberty team. Uh, I think you can even make the argument if Boise wins out, even with that one loss to Oregon, they probably make the college football playoff over Liberty. But keep in mind, Liberty was my pick to make it from the group of five entering the year. So they're just hanging hanging tough at this 12 spot. And then I got Utah. You Listen, Utah was six for me. They dropped five spots. Well, but they lost to Arizona, so they should be ranked below Arizona. No, that's not how rankings work. Listen, this team, when they get Cam Risen back, I believe in this team. I really do. The question is, Cam, are you ever coming back? Are you going to come back home? Radically different team. This is a team that plays really good defense, though. So, like, I'm, I, I'm, still, I'm still holding out that Utah is my favorite to win the Big 12. But again, a lot of that is, is Cam Ward healthy or when is he going to be healthy? Top 10, Ole Miss here at 10. Devastating loss to Kentucky. Couldn't tie it at the end of the ball game. You go wide left. The offense didn't run uh, as smooth as it has earlier in the season. Granted, they didn't face good competition early in the season. Maybe this is a wake-up call. Better to get this out early. You got some big matchups later in the year. Let's see. Let's see how Ole Miss hands tough. Uh, Missouri, they're coming off a bye. They will take on Texas A&M, who is ranked by the AP, I believe. So they will take on uh, A&M this week, being one of their bigger challenges. Uh, their biggest challenge for Mizzou will be against Alabama. But honestly, when you look at most SEC schedules, they have a relatively okay one. Like it's a pretty darn good one. I can't see this Mizzou team being anything more than a two-loss team. Uh, I I had them go into the year as a one-loss team. So we'll see. We'll see. Miami they survive against Virginia Tech. They're currently five and zero, undefeated. Um. They get California. They get Cal. Don't sleep on Cal. I don't think Miami's out of the woods yet. I'm just waiting for Miami to break my heart. Listen, this is a, this is a relatively all right Cal team. Don't sleep on California. Georgia, they end up dropping down to seven for me, uh, which I think the AP only had them drop to five, which I think that's fine. It's just I felt like I had to have uh, both Penn State and Oregon, who are currently undefeated, ahead of them. Uh, they'll get their bigger matchups later in the year. Oregon will get Ohio State in the next couple of weeks. So, again, I'm I'm fairly conservative with my polls. So, I don't, I, I don't like making massive move up. Like, I don't, I don't like dropping teams massively or raising them up massively. I just do it moderately throughout the season. But, yeah, hell of a game for Georgia. Uh, made that loss look a hell a lot prettier. But fortunately, next weekend, they will get a uh, a pick-me-up game as they take on a devastated Auburn squad. Uh, Oregon, they got Michigan State coming up this week. Uh, the, the, the win against UCLA wasn't honestly all that impressive. Uh, but the offense is looking good. Yeah, there's some gaps here and there, but uh, this is a very good... Oregon team, I stand by them being like one of like the top three most talented teams in college football. Now let's go to the top five. Penn State, they're here at five. They get UCLA next weekend. So again, nothing crazy. These teams are starting to gobble some of the uh, uh, the teams on the 
at the bottom of the totem pole of the Big Ten. But Penn State did have the more impressive win this week against a very good Illinois team. You have had Abdul Carter and uh, Danny's. Is it Dennis? Danny Sutton Dennis? Uh, I always mix it up. But th those guys went off against two very good tackles for Illinois. Uh, they did a good job. They win 21-7. to seven. Love to see it. Tennessee, they are at four for me now. They're coming off a bye. They take on Arkansas. I do think Tennessee has uh, a top five defense in the country, which is great when you consider how explosive that offense can be. Like this is, and it's wild. This offense can be explosive, but it also could be a grinder when it comes to the run game. And then the defense is just like, yeah, if the offense isn't clicking, we could keep the team in the ball game until the offense does hit those big shots. So don't sleep on Tennessee. They get Arkansas next week. Uh, Texas, they're at number three. They beat uh, Mississippi State 35 to 13. They will get a bye uh, next week. And uh, when, when is that Georgia game coming up? Let's uh, let's take a quick gander at that real quick. Is that going to be week eight? Yeah, that's week eight. So week eight is huge for the SEC. If you didn't know, now you know. Uh, week eight is going to consist of not just only Georgia taking on Texas, but also Alabama taking on Tennessee. So we're going to get a lot of top 10 action, top seven here. And then I have Ohio State. They obliterate Michigan State. Don't know why I ever believed Michigan State could cover 24 and a half, but I did. And uh, to be fair, Michigan State kicked, like shot themselves in the foot quite a bit, whether it was turnover on downs or fumbles um, in when they were in scoring position. Ohio State takes on Iowa, so probably their biggest test of the year thus far. Let's see how it goes. Alabama, they, they had to move them to number one. They beat my previous number one team. I think Alabama was ranked four or five for me anyway, so it's not like this is a big rise for Alabama, but it was an impressive game for them. They get Vandy next week, so hell yeah. Good, good on the Crimson Tide. Uh, th this is going to be a tight race for the college football 25, uh, top or college football, the playoff 12. Why, why, why am I saying this in weird ways? The 12 playoff team, the 12 team college football playoff. It's going to be a wild ride. Let's talk about the Heisman front runners as I'm going to start with Cam Ward. He, he has been lining it up on the stat sheet. He has 20 total touchdowns this season. I believe he might lead or he might be second in the FBS in passing yards. This man is slinging the ball around. But you do look at some of like, the, the, the turnovers were apparent. The turnover-worthy plays were apparent against Virginia Tech. That's why I don't have him higher than five. But he's certainly, he, 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 he's a front runner. He is a front runner. You can make a good argument that I think he, that he could be honestly at three. Uh, I think the, uh, I think my three, four, and five are pretty interchangeable right now at this juncture. But let's go to number four as it's Shadur Sanders, quarterback out of Colorado. He has 15 total touchdowns this year. And I think, with all things considered, where it's not like the offensive line has played particularly well, but they played better this past week. The defense is starting to step up. Uh, but for the most part, Shadur has been kind of having to shoulder this Colorado team by himself with his good pal, Travis Hunter, who we'll talk about later. But Shadur's played a really good year of college football. If you, if you want to make a case, Cam Ward should be higher than Shadur. I think that's fine, but I think Shadur is playing the best football at the quarterback position currently. He is a very, very good passer. And then at number three, I got Boise State running back Ashton Genty. The dude is tearing apart college football. No running back is, 
is even on his level thus far this season. He has 13 touchdowns and only nine rece 19 receiving yards. This was a guy that had 500 receiving yards last year. I don't know why they aren't getting him more involved in the in the passing game, but it is what it is. Through four games, oh, he has 845 yards, 13 touchdowns. That's insane. This guy might score 35, 40 touchdowns this season, which at that point probably makes him the Heisman. It's kind of nuts. Kind of nuts. Uh, I mean, as competition gets stiffer, he's probably more in the 25, 30 range of total touchdowns, but the, the dude's tearing it up right now. And at number two, I have Jalen Milrow. How can he not be after that performance against Georgia? I know he hasn't cracked over a thousand passing yards on the season yet, uh, but he's got a ton of rushing yards. He has 18 total touchdowns, 10 through the air, eight on the ground. He had the Heisman moment, the, the Heisman performance. That was a Big, big game for him against Georgia, against a very good Georgia defense. Hell yeah. Jalen Milrow, you're number two. And then at number one, I got Travis Hunter. He's got to be the leader, right, for the Heisman right now. Like, no one's playing to his level because he plays both sides of the football. Not only does he have two interceptions, two pass breakups, a forced fumble, but he's also killing it at the wide receiver position where he has over 500 yards receiving, and six touchdowns. He's doing it while playing over 120 snaps a game every game. Like, this dude's snap total is just insane. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up now. I want to know. I want to know. What is this cat's snap total thus far through the year, uh, through the season? Travis Hanna. As currently, he's played 662 snaps. Um, but yeah, he has played at least 122 or more snaps every game. He had 136 snaps in the opener, 129 in week two, 122 in week three, 147 in week four, and then in week five, 128. That's insane. That's ludicrous. It's like, how is that even sustainable? He's doing a great job. He should be, uh, in my opinion, the front runner for the Heisman Trophy.